Hi folks, I'm Gigi and in this video I'm going to talk about the main feature of AJS 2021 Update 2. And I have to say I'm really excited about this one because with it you can now create your own tools in AJS. As an introduction, I would just like to show you quickly an example on how I'm utilizing this one currently. A colleague of mine has been working with the RIMS and so I saw a lot of things, um, potential errors, how you could improve the workflows there by writing your own little alias tools. And one of the tools I've been writing is the subdiv perpendicular align. It takes an subdiv as an input, then you select the CVs you want to align perpendicular, then you select the surfaces you want to align the subdiv perpendicular to, you hit build, and uh, let's get the right one to delete. And as you can see, the subdiv is now Align perpendicular to the outer rim. Same thing you can do to the inner one. So just select the sub like select the CVs, select the reference surface, help hit build. And you end up with a sub which is aligned perpendicular. All right, let's pick up for a second and I'll show you how this is done in general for all other kind of tools. So the tool you can use to write your own tools is called Dynamo Player and it's located under the Transform tab. Here in the pull down, it's the default one which displays. And while this one is using Dynamo and Dynamo scripts in the background, this can be used for nearly anything. So it goes far beyond patterning and generative design, all the things you would usually connect with Dynamo. To show this, alias 2021.2 comes with 14 Dynamo Player scripts. You can see all of them by activating the what's new shelf here under help. And there you see all of those. And only one of these scripts is targeting the typical Dynamo area of patterning, respectively computational design. All the other ones are targeting different areas like file export, subdiv primitive generation, and more complex tools like to create or modify subdiv or nerves geometry. So this really shows the possible diversity of this functionality. I want to make you aware of this because if you are, you can either write a script yourself or ask someone else, your company Dynamo expert or someone on the forum to create a script, which then can improve your daily work. So how do you utilize your own written Dynamo scripts as tools in alias? Well, the first time you open the Dynamo player, it uh, takes usually a few seconds because Dynamo needs to start in the background. Uh, but all other subsequent uses of Dynamo or the Dynamo player in this area session will be fast as usual. So the first time the Dynamo player comes up, uh, the script location is empty and you can just browse on your computer to the Dynamo script you want to utilize. So let's go here to my work in progress section and just load the script I've shown you before. As mentioned, first time you use it a few seconds to fire up Dynamo. And then you can see that the Dynamo player window adjusts according to the script and it will show you all the needed inputs here in the lower section. And you can, by the way, also control how this one is displayed on the Dynamo side. So if you now want to use this script here on a more regular basis and you want to have it as a regular tool on your shelf, you can then, when the script is loaded, just middle mouse button, drag it onto your shelf. And you're creating an instance now of the Dynamo player, which will always be loading the script, which you had here in this section when you dragged it onto the shelf. Right, so um, then control, control right mouse button, double click to give it a good name so you can actually recognize it, your daily work. And now, yeah, I mean, every time uh, now you'll start this one here, it will bring up the sub D line perpendicular script, script and you've created your own tool. And this is extremely powerful because now users can use this one here. They don't have even to know that this is Dynamo or it's using Dynamo in the background. For them, it's just a sub perpendicular line tool, right? And they can use it straight away. Nothing to be known about Dynamo. They can just use it. So let's have a quick look at the different categories of tools you can create using Dynamo and the Dynamo player, utilizing the What's New Shelf and its sample scripts. Let's bring up the What's New Shelf once more and go through the different tools and different categories. The hexagon 
tool takes a NURBS surface as an input and will create a NURBS hexagon pattern on it. I'm not going to show this one here. It's rather straightforward anyway, and you should be aware of what it's a typical Dynamo area of using Dynamo for generative design, right? The export TSM file, it takes a subdiff as an input and writes a TSM file. This is interesting because Fusion can read TSM files. So if you want to exchange subd geometry between alias and Fusion, this could be your way to go. And the first tool I'm getting a little bit more into detail will be the tire tool. So the tire tool takes a construction point as an input. So let's create one. Bring it up, and as you can see, the Dynamo player scripts do support pre selection. So this one stays selected. I just hit accept, and this one creates a tire for me, which you can then yeah, make wider. That's why you can change the proportion between the yeah, side area and the tread, the rim size. You can also make the tread more or less round. Yeah. A lot of parameters to play with. Um, I think this one shows very nicely how useful it can be if you have certain nodes geometry to be created where you do know the parameters which are needed to achieve the, uh, the shape you're aiming for. And now you can create a Dynamo tool for that and you don't have to always start from scratch. Instead, you just write a Dynamo player script. You know the parameters which uh, are used for the shape creation and you can just play around with the parameters and, and directly get the, the wanted object. The next category I'd like to show you is the one of subdiff templates. And you might be familiar with this example because I've been showing this one as a wire file connected to a wire file. This is now the Dynamo Player Script version of it, which creates you a subdiff shape of a, uh, yeah, of a side of a car. And you can adjust the width of the car, you can adjust the wheelbase, right? A little bit longer or shorter. You can adjust the opening angle. So uh, a lot of parameters to play with. You can also adjust the topology. So change the amount of radial spans, change the amount of spans from front to back, and so on and so forth. And this is yeah, another example of when you know that you're going to create certain kind of shapes more often, it makes sense to spend the effort and create a Dynamo script to just put that one into a tool where you only have to play with the parameters and you'll get your wanted shape straight away without having to start from scratch all the time. So let's copy and paste this one for a second for the next one I'd like to show. So move this one here up and just create edit history this one here to give it a slightly different shape. So let's change the wheelbase to make it a little bit shorter. And also change the radius here to maybe something like this. Because the next script I'm going to show you is a modificational, well, kind of a modificational one because um, the morph script takes two sub Ds as an input, which have to be originating from the same shape. So it has to have the same amount of CVs. So yeah, best way to is to ensure that is copy and paste, right? And then modify. Now we have two different sub D shapes here. I select the first one, I select the second one, and the morph script is creating an in-between version of the two. And now you can use a single slider to update between the two shapes you've created. So one way to utilize this one is if you know one sub car model then you do a lot of changes to yeah change the length or the height of the car and then the designer comes well you know i like a a little bit more than the variant b but something in between you can then select the two sub diff and uh sub diffs and use this tool here to use one slider to move smoothly between between the two different designs you might have The next category I'd like to talk about is the one of sub D primitives. I'm not going into detail on all the torus, the sphere, the quad ball, those or the cone, those are rather straightforward. 
but I'd like to spend a second on the pipe tool because it can do a little bit more than the name might suggest. And to demonstrate this one, I'll just quickly create three curves here, which are connected. And if you give the pipe tool connected curves as input, it will then create the needed topology at where the curves meet up. So this is kind of nice. So if you have a curve network and you, you know, you can create a, a pipe and they're all connected and at the connection points, you get a nice smooth transition with a needed topology. And as you might remember, I've been using this one here to show the, the rim example in the beginning. Another tool worth mentioning is the sweep tool. So this is not a subtive primitive tool, but a rather yeah, a little bit more complex one, which takes curves as input. So let's quickly create guide curve and then also profile curve. So the sweep tool takes a path curve, a profile curve, and then creates you a sub D topology out of those input curves. And the last category of tools is the one we started with is the one you actually write yourself just to quickly show you the power. So I've been creating this helping script to give me the rough dimensions of the rim and the vector, uh, the sector I can work with. I then created quickly sub D pipe here with three curves. I aligned it perpendicular to this rim, right? I can then get back to the initial state of where I've decided on the rim sectors, how many sectors I want. Then you can switch here the base count to, okay, you know, this is my starting base count of six. And if I then select the sub D, I have created, it will rotate this one here for me, which is, well, not so impressive, right? But if you then, let's hide the original one, which is this one here, uh, object display invisible. What is really powerful then is you can now go in there and say, well, you know, maybe six spokes is not what I want. I want to have 11 spokes. And we'll do the rotating and the, the scaling for you. So radial scaling. So once you've finished your sub D rim work, you can choose any amount of spokes. And the tool will do all the rotating and the scaling for you to, to make it fit. And I yeah, find this one really neat and helpful. And this is yeah, a way on, if you have a, a way of using Dynamo player scripts to make your daily life easier. So I hope you found this one useful. Thanks a lot for watching the video and hope to see you on the next one.